I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Without a doubt, Christian churches all over the entire world will be talking today about this gospel lesson. They'll be talking about doubting Thomas. But why? Why do we immediately go to the condemnation of others? Immediately, we go to the negatives, even though this is the good news of the gospel. What we really need to do is to stop finger pointing, right? Absolutely. You're a doubter. Stop that finger pointing. Doubting Thomas. Really? Those two words are even used by, I've heard it from non-Christians, calling someone a doubting Thomas when someone who doubts the truth. If you think back, may, some of you like me may have to think back a long time, if you think back to your Sunday school lessons, my guess would be one or two Sunday school teachers also probably told you to not be a doubting Thomas. Please, that is a terrible moniker. And it is actually simply not true. You see, there is no room for doubt that Christ has risen from the dead, our resurrected Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. No doubt that he was compassionate about the soul of Thomas. Since miraculously, one week after his resurrection, where is he? He's back in the room because Thomas is there. He's there specifically for Thomas. Everyone else present in that room, they had already seen and heard the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They knew that Jesus was alive. And it's interesting. Nowhere in any of the Gospels, any place ever written, will you ever find Thomas being called Doubting Thomas by any of the Gospel writers. My guess would be that none of the disciples who were there probably called him that either. And neither does Jesus. There was no condemnation of Jesus, but of Thomas, because he knew what Thomas needed. Jesus Christ has that heart of compassion and love, always coming at just the right time. So Thomas receives absolute physical proof, just as the disciples and the others gathered a week before had seen. He sees Jesus' scarred body, and yet in that scarred body, he looks at, my guess would be the face of Jesus. And in the face of Jesus, what does he see? He sees compassionate love for him. That's what's on the face of our risen Lord. And he hears Jesus pronounce again, peace be with you. The Gospels don't state if he's looking at Thomas, but my guess would be, yes, he's probably looking straight at Thomas. Thomas had stretched his grief, had stretched his isolation seven days longer than the rest of Jesus' disciples. And Jesus Christ wants to leave no one behind. Seven days earlier, Mary and the others, in a what I'd call a doubting mode, had gone to the tomb expecting to find the dead Jesus buried, the tomb where they saw Jesus placed three days earlier. Instead, they find peace. Peace in the empty tomb and in the word of the angels. The apostles, they remain in that doubting mood, not even making a move to the door after they hear this from the women who had seen Jesus and seen the angels. What does Jesus do? He changes them all that night from doubt mode to believing mode when he comes for them. That's what Jesus does. The night of the resurrection, he comes to them, all of them. They now have peace 
with God. My friends in Christ, you and I need to see beyond a shadow of a doubt that when we get stuck in that doubting mode about God, the presence of Jesus is essential for us if we're ever going to get out of it because that's the only way that we will see peace. We don't need to look for peace. Jesus brings his peace to us. The fact that Jesus brings his peace to all those in need because we are all in need of God's peace. We never have to go looking for it. The presence of Jesus Christ is always with you and you can find that peace. Peace. Did you count the number of times we heard it in our gospel lesson? Three times. Peace be with you. Jesus knows that there is never peace when we are in that doubting mode. Think about it. Doubt is a thing what I would say just kind of gradually creeps up on you. Doubt disturbs then our innermost parts. We start feeling it, maybe physically, maybe even within our own bodies somehow. And doubt can also lead us to withdraw from the body of Christ, also lead us to withdraw from Christ himself. Maybe you have shied away from someone right here at Zion or wherever you worship. I would be so bold as to say Thomas' problem was not that he doubted. Thomas' problem was how he reacted to doubt. How did he react? He all of a sudden excludes himself from God's family. He chooses to separate himself from them, and when he did that, he separated himself from Christ Jesus. And in that, he became even more vulnerable to doubt. He was away from those who loved him. He missed out on Jesus' initial blessing of peace, a peace that they all needed to hear with their own ears. Thomas had forgotten something. Thomas had forgotten that we never leave the presence of God. Sometimes, I know I'm guilty, and I'm sure you are too, we forget that very fact as well, that we never leave the presence of God. Think about the last difficult time that you had experienced. Maybe it's recent, maybe it's a little further away. Difficult times many times will come up unexpectedly. Sometimes they just happen and they call for us to take immediate action. For me, thank the Lord, I've actually not had a difficult time to my last run-in with a MoDOT pothole. <laughs> For those of you who are not here, it happened uh, during one of the Wednesdays of Lent after worship for me. MoDOT is not the only one who doesn't repair potholes. You and I hit potholes in life. Maybe not literally, but we find that something that stops us, which is exactly what it did to me. It stopped me right along the side of the road. But let it never stop you from remembering that you are always in the presence of Jesus. Because your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is always right there, right alongside of your pothole, no matter what it may be. And when you see maybe in advance, maybe you can tell in advance that there's a difficult situation coming. You kind of feel maybe that doubt mode coming. Talk with one of the other members of the family of God. Or talk with me about it. You see, when we connect with one another as Christians, brothers and sisters, we are connected with Jesus Christ himself. Connected with his presence. Putting his, our trust fully 
in him. Never doubt that trusting Jesus brings us peace. We didn't sing it this morning, but many of you who know me, as I'm writing sometimes, these little hymns or whatever, just sometimes songs pop in my head. And in this case it was, I am trusting the Lord Jesus, trusting only thee. Not sure if Lincoln wrote this statement or Mark Twain. It's attributed to both. Better to remain silent and be thought a fool than to speak and remove all doubt. I put a little bit of a twist in that because I see it as when we're in doubt mode, we always know the facts. That's what we need to go for. We need to go for the facts. I want you to listen again for a moment to the facts that we heard in our gospel lesson for this morning. Jesus has defeated death. Jesus showed himself alive, right? Absolutely. Jesus has been raised from the grave. Again, Jesus showed himself alive. He has the clear marks, the scars on his glorified body, on his hands, his feet, and he has a hole in his side. You and I also know that we have peace with God. Jesus gave us that. Jesus is sending us, sending you and me, just as God the Father sent him. Where is he sending us? To share the message of the risen Christ. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit. To forgive sins and withhold the forgiveness of sins. One reason to withhold forgiveness of sins from anybody. That is, if they are unrepentant. Otherwise, we forgive the sins of everyone. We also know we are blessed by God in Jesus Christ because we, even though we have not yet seen the body of the risen Lord and Savior, yet we believe it. We believe it because God's holy word says it. And we know that believing in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, we have life in his name. Life in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no condemnation for you in the presence of Jesus. And you and I now have the assurance that we have peace from God Almighty because we just read and we just meditated on just 12 verses of God's holy word. Only in 12, and listen to what all you just learned to remember. Imagine what you can find in the rest of God's word. Oh yeah, just one more word of peace. Thomas answers Jesus, my Lord and my God. With Thomas, you and I too, can claim God Almighty as our own. Because God first claimed you and me as his own in Jesus Christ. Now, live in that peace. Amen.